a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 44. I am your host, The Evangelical Norm. So The Fifth Seal is a podcast that started it all. About nine years ago, I started doing a podcast called Persecuted Church Awareness Month, where I would, in November, I would count down the world watch list from Open Doors uh, from numbers 30 to number one, which are the worst countries in the world for Christians to live in due to persecution. So we would start at 30. Every day of the month, we would do an update on the persecuted church and give points about each of those individual countries and pray for those countries as well. So that expanded over the last couple of years to doing from 50 to number one, and we do it throughout the year. So from January through October, we do two episodes a month, the second and fourth Wednesdays, which I'm actually on schedule this time. So that's uh, that's a praise uh, to God there that we are actually not playing catch up on this. But uh, two a month, we count down from 50 to number 31. And then in the month of November, again, we still maintain Persecuted Church Awareness Month. And every day of the month, we count down from 30 to number one. So as always, I invite you to and in, in, I invite you to invite others to come be part of this with us. If you know anybody who is uh, willing to join us in prayer for the persecuted church, persecuted church around the world, say that real fast four times. Um, let's not. Uh, Invite them to come to the Fifth Seal Facebook page, or they can head over to the Evangelical Norm on YouTube, hit the subscribe, hit the uh, notifications, and you'll get all the stuff that I do um, on the podcast there. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. We are at episode 44, and it is Wednesday, April 8th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. And this comes from persecution.org. Over 100 Christian families denied food aid amid COVID-19 crisis in Pakistan. International Christian Concern has documented another instance of Pakistani Christians being turned away from an aid distribution because of their religious identity. This marks the third incident of discrimination documented by ICC since Pakistan has gone into lockdown in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. On Sunday, April 5th, more than 100 Christian families from Sandha, Santa Kalan village, located in the Kasar district of Pakistan's Punjab province, were excluded from a distribution of food aid. Shaquille Ahmed, a local Muslim and human rights defender, told ICC that Sheikh Abdul Halid Hamid, a cleric at the local mosque, decided that the food aid would be distributed to only Muslim families. The aid, collected by a village management committee and mostly made up of foodstuffs, was reportedly designed to be distri distributed among all the deserving families of the village. However, when the aid was distributed, Sheikh Hamid did not allow even a single Christian family to receive aid. Ahmed reportedly protested against this discrimination and raised his voice against the decision made by the cleric. However, these protests went unheard. Quote, I condemn this inhumane dis and discriminatory act by my Muslim village fellows and stand in solidarity with the poor Christian population of the village, unquote, Ahmed told ICC. Quote, Therefore, a group of like-minded individuals are collecting donations from liberal Muslims to extend foodstuffs to this vulnerable segment, the Christians of this country, unquote. Since March 21st, most of Pakistan has been placed on lockdown as authorities seek to slow the spread of COVID-19. However, this national lockdown has significantly affected the country's poor and vulnerable communities. This includes Pakistan's religious minorities. Approximately 45% of Pakistan's total population live below the poverty line, earning most of their income through daily labor jobs. The national lockdown has cut off many of these laborers from earning daily wages, and reports of starvation are already circulating. So, uh, 
here we have just a, a prime example of simply religious persecution because in many of these countries where Islam is the main religion, clerics are Muslim clerics are given the authority to basically run the villages and so on. So here we have a hundred families of our, our Christian brothers and sisters who are obviously hungry and in need of food and being locked down. And when the country comes together or when, when a village comes together to help each other out, the Christians are excluded. So praise God that there are some liberal uh, Muslims there that are willing to uh, provide for these Christian families. But let's pray for our brothers and sisters there in Pakistan who are persecuted uh, simply because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And also from uh, persecution.org, International Christian Concern has learned that on Tuesday evening, March 31st, despite serious concerns and restrictive member measures to stall the COVID-19 pandemic, Fulani militants continued to move freely and attacked two Christian villages in Miango District, Nigeria. This is the eighth time in the last three years that Ancha Village has suffered at the hands of these militants. Narrating the heartbreaking incident, Ishaya, a member of the village's Baptist church, said, quote, They came about 11 p.m., firing gunshots and burning houses. It was so dreadful. They killed three persons and also burnt four cars, unquote. Ishaya further disclosed that the militants proceeded to launch an attack on Huke, the neighboring village, on Wednesday, April 1st. During this attack, seven people were killed and approximately 30 homes were burned down over a span of two days. Quote, we are in great distress here, unquote, Ashaya lamented. Those killed in Ancha Village were a pregnant member of the Baptist Church named Tina Musa, another member of the Baptist Church, Gado Bata, and a member of the Methodist Church, William Reavy. An injured, an un, an injured victim of the Ancha Village, village attack, Dunlami Gado, was also who was admitted to Bingham University Teaching Hospital in Jos, recalled, quote, I was in the house when we heard gunshots. We came out not knowing that the attackers were already in the village. They fired shots at me and three bullets hit me on my left leg, shattering the bone. After they disappeared, I kept yelling out for help. Some persons eventually heard and came. They picked me up on a motorcycle riding through the bush until we got to the hospital in Miango, unquote. Dunlami's injury was complicated, so he was referred to the, a hospital with the appropriate specialists. He has been scheduled for immediate surgery. A local pastor, Yakubu Kipasa, in ECWA Church, grieved over the th murder of three of his church members. They came on Wednesday, April 1st at about 8 p.m. and returned the next day, April 2nd at about 5 p.m. They killed three by gunshots and destroyed our church building. They also burnt several houses. Pastor Yakubu and said the gunman came in, came in large numbers. The entire village has been deserted, and he and his family are taking refuge in another village. In a 2017 attack on Ancha Village, the militants killed 20 people, all but one of whom were members of the Baptist Church. So... We, this is just becoming more and more common, the, the uh, attacks by the Fulani militants. Um, we have in these areas, you have Boko Haram, you have Al-Shabaab, you have uh, different groups of, of terrorists that are uh, aligned with Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and it's becoming more and more um, of a regular thing. Of course, Ancha Village, this is the third time that they've been attacked in, in three years. Uh, by this same group of Fulani militants who are obviously not paying attention to their country's uh, quarantine orders and so on. They're out and about and uh, still persecuting those who simply believe in Jesus Christ, um, who many of them may have been following their own uh, quarantine orders. So pray, continue to pray for uh, our, our brothers and sisters in uh, Nigeria and Kenya and these areas where these groups are becoming more and more violent. And that leads us to our country of today, number 44, which is Kenya. Uh, some facts about Kenya, just some information. The region is Africa. Persecution type is Islamic oppression. 
persecution level is very high. Population is about 52,215,000, of which about 42 million are Christians. The main religion of Kenya is Christianity. It is a presidential republic, and the leader is President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. A growing threat of Islamic radicalism, even though Kenya is a majority Christian country, reports have indicated that a growing Al-Shabaab presence in the northeast and coastal regions monitor the activities of Christians. Believers in these parts of Kenya who converted from Islam live under constant threat of attack, even from their closest relatives. Organized corruption and crime are also serious problems. Corrupt officials do not take measures against those who persecute Christians. This encourages additional acts of persecution. All Christian communities in the country face persecution, although where they live and which Christian groups they belong to significantly impact the level of persecution. Radical Muslims living in Kenya, together with militants crossing the borders from Somalia, severely persecute Christians and in recent years have been responsible for the killings of hundreds of Christians. Any Christian who lives or works in countries bordering Somalia is at risk for intimidation and attacks by al-Shabaab. In some parts of Kenya's northeastern and coastal regions, Christians are often ostracized and denied access to community resources. On January 15, 2019, Al-Shabaab took responsibility for a 19-hour siege of a hotel in Nairobi and the killing of more than 10 people. The Islamic extremist group said it took the action because the U.S. president had declared Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. Four days later, on January 19, 2019, a Christian convert was beaten and subsequently arrested by Mus Muslim policemen on the outskirts of Nairobi after refusing to renounce Christianity. On May 17, 2019, a Muslim mob attacked four churches in Nairobi, injuring several Christians. So a few prayer points for Kenya. In the predominantly Muslim areas of northeast and coastal Kenya, political groups are using people's dissatisfaction with the government to spread radicalism with direct and indirect consequences for the church that has suffered violence attacked, violent attacks. Pray for wisdom and diligence from the government in dealing with grievances and that they will be able to unify the people of Kenya. The church has limited capacity to minister to congregations and communities in the context of persecution. Pray that Open Doors Persecution Preparedness Training will bring hope to many in their difficult circumstances. And many Christians have suffered severe trauma and targeted attacks, and Open Doors is working hard to equip the Kenyan church to offer trauma healing and support to members. Pray for Christians who have been traumatized that they would find healing and that their pastors and communities would help show the love of Christ to them. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for... Um, the ability to come together through the internet to lift up our voices together to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted simply because of their faith in you, Lord. Father, we, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, these people in this village who have been denied uh, food and aid during the time of, of quarantine because of COVID-19. Father, we pray that first you would keep them healthy and Lord, that you would provide for their needs in these areas uh, of food and uh, basic supplies that they need for, for living during this time of being uh, quarantined because of, of this pandemic, Lord. We pray that, that you would raise up even more uh, liberal Muslims in those areas, Lord, to, to help to provide for the Christian families in the area that are ostracized and denied aid because of their faith in you, Lord. Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in, in Nigeria um, in these, these cities that are being attacked by these Fulani militants, Lord. Uh, we pray that, that you would bring comfort to the families of those who have lost their lives. And God, that, that you would use this time of persecution to draw even more people to yourselves. That, Lord, that as, as other Muslims in these areas would see the willingness of your people to stand even in the faith, the face of persecution and refuse to renounce their faith, Lord, that that would cause uh, others to look to your word and to look to the gospel 
and and see what it is that people are willing to lay down their life for and that's simply the fact that they are sinners in need of a savior and that you have provided the salvation that they need so we pray for for boldness and and more uh, converts to christianity in these areas lord we pray for our brothers and sisters in kenya um we do pray for wisdom uh in the government that they would uh, be wise in the way that they deal with the grievances and that they would truly be able to, to bring unity to the, uh, the people of Kenya, Lord. And uh, Father, we pray for um, the churches that, that are not able to minister to the communities um, in the midst of this persecution. And we do pray that that with the, the training that Open Doors brings to these areas, that it will, will help them in these, these hard circumstances, Lord. We pray for pastors and, and teachers that they would be able to move freely um, and minister to, to the people in their areas uh, who, uh, who, whether it, it's a need for, for counseling to provide uh, to sacraments, to meet together, to worship together. Lord, we just pray that you would uh, encourage and strengthen your church in these areas. And we pray for those who have, who have suffered in the, uh, the targeted attacks um, from different groups, whether it be Al-Shabaab or Fulani militants or, or other terrorist organizations. Lord, we pray um, that you would bring healing to these people. Again, comfort to those who have lost loved ones, healing to those who have been injured and brutalized. And Lord, that you would strengthen their faith and that they would be emboldened to share your gospel with those around them because of the reason, uh, because they have a reason to endure uh, the persecution that they go through. So Father, we, we do lift them up to, to you, all of our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you, Lord. We pray that their faith would be strong and that their their boldness to, to preach the gospel would be increased and that you would use that, Lord, to draw more and more people to yourself. And Father, again, we, we praise you for this this time we have to come and to, to lift up our brothers and sisters, to pray for them, to be more and more aware of what's going on in these areas around the world where our brothers and sisters are persecuted because of their faith in you. And it's for your glory and in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Again, thank you guys for being part of this, coming and joining to, to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Please invite people to come and join with us, whether it's a, the Fifth Seal Facebook page, whether it's the Evangelical Norm on YouTube. You can get the audio podcast on Google Play, iTunes, wherever you get your audio podcast. You can find us just by looking for the Fifth Seal. We're there. Invite them to come and join and be part of this move of God to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm-hmm.